Joining me now is Eric Ries. He's the author of The Lean Startup, how today's entrepreneurs use continuous innovation to create radically successful businesses. Eric, welcome to Bloomberg West. Thanks for having me on. So what is the lean startup? What does that mean? We call it lean by analogy to lean manufacturing. Just as you said, we're living in an exciting time where entrepreneurship's being democratized, where more and more people have access to it because costs have come down. But also, the speed with which new ideas can be tested and tried has gotten a lot faster. And that, I think, is the really exciting part of what is happening. We can uh, run a lot more experiments. And what we're starting to realize is that a startup is really nothing more than a gigantic experiment to discover if we're on the path to a sustainable business. Now we you know companies are cheaper to start than ever before and there are because of that more startups out there than ever before you have you have companies like Instagram for example which you know an, an experiment turned into a wild success but just because companies are easier to start doesn't mean that they're all going to succeed does that mean there's just more failures out there there is a lot more failures by volume for sure and in fact anyone who's talk, telling the truth about what entrepreneurship is really like will admit that there is going to be a lot of failure for every success but even in the cases of the seemingly overnight successes like Instagram if you go behind the curtain and we saw this at the conference yesterday you'll see you know usually a year or two of failure that preceded it it, it requires that failure, that learning, in order to discover what really works with the thing, with the experiment that actually starts to take off. Right, but let me ask you, you know, lean manufacturing is about, is a really a Weight Watcher manufacturing. It's about taking a fat organization and making the process lean. Yes. Whereas the lean businesses you talk about start off lean. Is, you know, I think one of the important things, is something we try to talk about in the show all the time, how do you take a fat company <laughs> and make it lean? Lean manufacturing taught the world to look at every production process with the lens, what creates value and what creates waste. And then once you have that lens, you realize, oh, let's get rid of the waste, focus right, on the but value. The companies you're talking about are talking about starting with outsourced uh, production uh -huh. elements. That's right. When you've got an in-source production model, is it about tossing out those production elements? It's not really about outsourcing. It, instead of in manufacturing where we want to leanly, efficiently create more stuff, in entrepreneurship, the big problem is we're often not building the right stuff at all. So we want to, as efficiently and as quickly as possible, discover what the right things to build are. And that's what these new tech tools and techniques are really key for. You say you give startups a scientific approach uh, to, to manage their budding companies, but is that really possible? We'll see. Uh, the truth is we don't know. We're at the very beginning of I, what I think is a revolution in the practice of entrepreneurship. And the biggest realization that I've had in the course of, of being part of that movement is that entrepreneurship is really a management discipline. It's the management discipline that deals with situations of high uncertainty. But I think what we're discovering is that even though we're going to have a lot of failure, even though we make mistakes, we can engineer our process to fail faster, to learn more from each mistake, and then do what we call the pivot, change direction before it's too late. I, it, this pivot word, you know, it actually means the first thing didn't work and we're going to do something else. It's become kind of a cool term for some reason I'm here in Sil that. Silicon Valley. No, it's fine. I mean, how many times should a startup be allowed to pivot? Well, there's no rigid formula, but I want to be real clear. People use the word pivot sometimes just to mean like any kind of change or just randomly try something new. No, a pivot is a change in strategy without a change in vision. And what happens is when companies, you know, like Groupon that spent their first year building The Point, the online activism platform, when they don't get any traction, they make the pivot. And then the first Groupon was something like two for one pizza for the pizza restaurant in the lobby of that restaurant. And I know everyone watching would say, well, if I was there, I would have known 20 pizzas sold. That means billion dollar company. <laughs> but the reality is because they had that year of failure, they understood how significant it was to get 20 people to do, frankly, anything at all. It strikes me that another aspect of companies knowing if they're going to succeed is not just a lower cost, but a much bigger market online. You know, the stat I always throw out is that there were 900,000 people with high speed internet in 1999. Today in the, in the U.S. alone, there are over 82 million, uh, worldwide over 2 billion. A, a bigger market's got to be a part of that. Absolutely. And not just a bigger market, but what we call a continuous path to scale. You can use what the same development tools and the same distribution tools to reach your first five customers as your next five million customers using but tools like Google AdWords. there isn't continuous scale for every business. Groupon's a perfect example. Uh -huh. The cheap pizzas might have been a good business. Uh, a company with, you know, Groupon's losing money hand over fist and, and has, you know, unpaid payables that, that are also <laughs> mounting. Uh, maybe you don't want to get them started on Groupon. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying not every business can be as gigantic, even if the costs 
cost is low. At the, to a certain point, how does the low cost of manufacturing tell businesses, here's your sweet spot, don't get too big for your bridges? Well, our goal is to learn what the real scale of our business is. And instead of making an elaborate business plan and crazy financial models to try to predict what's going to happen, we simply take an empirical approach to say, you know, if Groupon works in one city, it probably will work in others. And if we can figure out what the unit costs and the marginal profitability is in each city, we can figure out how to replicate it. Now, whether Groupon ultimately will make that model work remains to be seen. But the experiment's been really valuable. Eric Reese, author of The Lean Startup. A lot of excitement about your book out there. Thank I can't so wait much. to read it. Thanks for joining us.